What's up, guys? Rick here with your DFS preview for this week's The Northern Trust. All capitalized. So, last week, <laughs> incredibly disappointing for Russell Henley not to get it done, especially with a multiple shot lead on Sunday. Uh, combine that with the Harris English the week before, and, you know, just a lot of heartache recently. I, I suppose it is uh, difficult to really complain when you've gotten hundreds of one winners of Cam Davis, Cam Champ, we hit JT. I just I just feel like we've been all over it recently and just haven't been able to get the victory. But hey, that's golf because even without Henley getting it done, which would have been just, just another massive community win, uh, I do want to shout out a couple of people here. And the Slack last night was uh, just absolutely lit on fire. I mean, everyone was was sharing screenshots. It was a, a great congratulatory uh, environment. Uh, number one, Nova Cats took down a showdown slate, which, uh, you know, he said it's the first ever. I, I want to congratulate him for that and the fact that there are other ways to do this, right? You know, if you're not playing on the, the the classic full slate, there are showdown slates that are available to you. There are tools that are available to try to identify some of these players that might be better for one round as opposed to four rounds. And then the big one, and DeMarco Nick, it, it just just absolutely bonkers stuff, turned his $66 into $7,611. He won the $33 single entry, says it was his biggest week ever. I just love single entry wins. I love... People that play single entry contests and are rewarded with wins and turn an amount of money that um, is not a huge investment every single week into something that is, hey, week changing, month changing, year changing, whatever. It's all good stuff. So congratulations, guys. I'm super stoked for you. And uh, also, I have uh, subscriptions to give away. So if you want to become a member of the Rick Run Good community, if you want to use all the tools, what I show you in this video and every other video, uh, there's two ways to enter. Number one, if you're on YouTube, uh, make sure that you are subscribed to the Rick Run Good YouTube channel. Leave a comment below uh, with who you think is going to win this week's Northern Trust and also make sure you like the video. Those are uh, That's way number one. Way number two is to go over to iTunes and leave a five-star rating and review for the podcast version of this show. It'll be linked in the description. It's called 300 yards to unknown five-star rating say something nice leave me your twitter handle that will get you entered into a draw like it did for bracketologist three who i pulled from an itunes review and lance simpson who i pulled from a youtube comment i will get in touch with you guys and get you all set up the schedule for this week, uh, generally the same. There is going to be a live chat on Wednesday. That's 3 p.m. Eastern time. That is ownership, question and answer, whatever you want to talk about for the 124 golfers in the field, not 125. Louis Ustazen has withdrawn. And he's the only qualified player who is not going to tee it up this week. Uh, there is also a jock market power hour. That's all things stock market DFS. It is taking off like a rocket ship. Is that the analogy I want to make? Yeah, like a rocket ship, 8.15 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. That is a very critical moment for uh, for stock market DFS, for the jock market. So join Joe and myself. And then Friday's Cut Sweat show is going to be 4 p.m. Eastern time. There will be a cut this week. They're going to go from 125 to 70. And then the final two events of the playoffs are going to be no cut events. So we'll figure out something to do on Fridays moving forward. And then finally... Finally, and I promise this is the last thing, if you have not noticed, the last couple of weeks I have released a golf vlog over the weekend. It is me actually playing 18 holes. I try to keep it generally in a kind of a, a tight a tight little window, 18 minutes or less, something like that. Uh, it's fun. I hit some good shots. I hit some horrible shots. I'm going to show you some courses around Las Vegas and, and different places. So just something fun for me. And also uh, maybe you're interested in to kind of break up the week a little bit more to come. Go check those out. There's two that are out right now. Okay. Let's jump into this week's Northern Trust. Back at Liberty National, this event now kind of rotates between uh, the, the the New York Metro and the Boston Metro. We were at TPC Boston last year back at Liberty National, which we used in 2019. That's when Patrick Reed won. It is a par 71. We're back on bent grass. Uh, the, the green skew, I think, smaller than tour average. I believe 5,000 square feet is, is generally the PGA Tour average. These are about 4,650, 4,653, actually. It's a very exact number that we get this week. And I was trying to find some comps. You know, the three 
300 yards where everything kind of narrows in. That's 30 yards wide. It's it's pretty straightforward. It's out right in front of you. And I think what's what's most notable is uh, because of uh, the schedule of this event and the stature of this event, you get all the top players in the world. And in fact, even without Louis Oosthuizen, this is the strongest field in official world golf rankings history outside of majors and the Players' Championship. Think about that. Absolutely stacked field. Um, that was courtesy of uh, Nosferatu tweeted that out. He's like the official World Golf Ranking guy I follow on, on Twitter. So thank you for that stat. So it really does create a situation where all the best players in the world are here and this year more, uh, more than ever. So driving distance at this event and also at Liberty National has certainly kind of uh, popped itself up as one of the key metrics. Birdie or better percentage, of course, does. Justin Johnson probably skewed that himself last year in terms of tournament correlation just because he won by, I don't know what he ended up winning by, 9 or 10 shots. I think it was 10. I thought he got to 30 under, and I thought English got to 20 under. Don't quote me on that, but it was, it was an outrageous victory. So if we start to look at golfers you know, in the last let's call it 36 rounds who are making a ton of birdies and driving it far. Well, uh, the way that we, one way we can look at that is, is birdie birdies per round, right? Seamus power. Number one. Can you believe that? He's been really, really good. He's $7,000. He's going to be incredibly popular this week. Uh, Jordan Spieth, Sam Burns, John Rahman, even Adam Shank round out the top five for birdies per round. And if you're looking for driving distance again, this is just the last 36 rounds. No, sir. No real surprises here. Bryson DeChambeau, Rory McIlroy, Cam Champ, Johnny Vegas, Matthew Wolf. Th those are your top five in terms of driving distance. But really, and as starting now, and especially as we get into the final stretch here of the playoffs. The, the pricing matters the most. We're going to have fields that are just stacked with great players. A lot of them are going to be playing well. A lot of them have winning upside. We are just going to have to find values based on salaries because you can't play them all. So let's look over at the cheat sheet. As I mentioned, only 124 golfers in this field because Louis not here. He will not be replaced because this is the playoffs. You have to qualify for it. So they're not going to bring anybody else in. 124 golfers right now. And seven of them, seven over 10,000. That might be the most, I don't want to say ever. I always hate to say that, but it, that I can remember. Usually six is the most we get uh, of golfers over $10,000. Seven here. Rom leads the way, 11,500 with DJ Spieth, Xander, Morikawa, Kepka, and McElroy in tow. It's a it's a fascinating set. Let's talk about let's talk about this group at the top. I can continue uh, to give the same the same spiel on on John Rahm uh, as I have been. I mean, this is a guy who we have not seen since the Open Championship because he tested positive for COVID before Memphis. Is that what it was? Um, but last time we saw him, finished third at the Open Championship. Start before that, he won the U.S. Open. Start before that, he had a six-shot lead on Saturday at the Memorial before he WD'd. Start before that, T8 at the PGA Championship. Look at the strokes gain metrics. We only have strokes gain metrics from three of those four events that I just listed off, and he has gained across the board in each and every one of them. He has been uh, dominant with his driver. He has been very good with the putter, which is the one thing that really at the beginning of the when he made the switch from uh, TaylorMade to Callaway, the putter was was a bit hairy. You know what I mean? That was kind of the, the lagging thing. He's figured it out. He's been really, really good this summer and into uh, what is about to be the fall here. It's just, it's, un it's unbelievable stuff. You look at his history at this event and at this course. So last year at TPC Boston, he finished sixth. Two years ago at Liberty National, he finished third. He has another third place finish in 2017. It, it, it's, there's... There's no reason not to play John Rahm, right? And you're not going to hear any argument from me. Uh, the price on $11,000 on Dustin Johnson is incredible. This is going to be polarizing. You know, you are you are looking at the golfer who who won this last year by a million strokes. Uh, but again, we did not play Liberty National. That was uh, 2019 when he finished 24th. He has won this event a couple of times. But I think the sentiment around Dustin Johnson is not nearly as strong as as the pricing is kind of asking of him. So he is he to me is going to be the leverage play in the ten thousand dollar range if that is the route you want to go. If you are looking for leverage, now can we start to see good signs from Dustin Johnson? Can we start to see that? I think the answer is generally 
Yes, he finished eighth at the Open Championship. We don't have the advanced metrics because they don't exist. The 3M Open, he missed the cut, but I believe the encouraging signs are that he gained two strokes on approach, something that has been a bit all over the place for him in the in the 2021 calendar year. He uh, then finished 10th at the WGC FedEx St. Jude, in which he gained strokes again on approach over three, gained strokes off the tee, not even all that much, not, not what we've been used to seeing, figured out the putter, figured out the short game. Now, we'll see if he can carry that over, but this to me, and we're going to see on Wednesday, especially during the live chat, how the ownership kind of uh, figures itself out in the $10,000 range. But, but as of right now on this Monday, he is certainly going to be the leverage guy. And I'm really interested to see how owned he is, because I think there's a case to be made that He's trending in the right direction. You know, uh, five of his last six have been top 25 finishes. He has a couple of top tens. The advanced metrics are starting to look good. The putter has 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 been solid for, for you know, five out of his last six. There, there's, there's a case to be made here. So I, I'm really intrigued on this Monday, and we can talk about it on Wednesday if I've, if I've cooled or not. Uh, but we'll certainly see there. Uh, Jordan Spieth is ten thousand eight hundred. I've 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 done the Spieth thing for for eight months. He is, um, you know, we can look at his his results from from Memphis most recently. But he is on approach one of uh, one of the best players that we have seen this uh, this year. He is uh, he lost strokes on approach and still figured out a way to finish t twelve in Memphis. He didn't play particularly well notched a 12th place finish. I, I just think he's going to be there. He's going to, he's going to make a lot of noise. Um, if you remember, I think it was, I think it was Memphis, right? Friday. Was it Friday night that he, he lost over four or lost four strokes on three swings, three, three shots. He lost four strokes to the field, which is an incredibly difficult thing to do. If you add four more strokes there, uh, I mean, he actually, he actually, chi- he, he was on the putting surface. He chipped off the green that, that shot alone, he lost like 1.3 uh, strokes to the field. He would have been better off if he just swung and missed, right? Like, think about that. Think about that. So uh, a little bit unlucky there, and he still finishes 12th. I think we're seeing what his what his ceiling really is. Now, the next couple of guys um, are, to me, Z- you know, Xander didn't play all that well in Memphis coming back from the Olympics. I'm not sure that's much of a concern. More of a concern around the fact that um, this is an event that in the last four, he hasn't been all that good. 25th, two missed cuts, and a 17th place finish. While the one missed cut did come at uh, did come at Liberty National, and he's kind of just in this sandwich here. I probably am not all that interested. Morikawa, something is is um, something's brewing here with Colin Morikawa, and I want to make sure that we take a little bit of a look at this. So for now. Two events in a row. The Olympics, he lost a stroke and a half on approach, and he was a zero in Memphis. I cannot tell you how rare that is. Uh, I mean, for a guy who, since he has come on tour, has been dominant on approach. Uh, Now, there's two ways to look at that. One is that he's broken and that this is a huge red flag. The other is that... uh, this isn't going to continue to happen, and especially with a week off where he comes back from Tokyo, he gets to he he has to go directly to Memphis. He gets to now rest, gets to figure out uh, and work on things. I, I lean more towards he's going to go right back to being his normal self, which is pretty dangerous, and it makes him pretty appealing at only ten thousand four hundred. And then you combine that with um, you know Kepka and Rory, who you know Rory Rory to me. Again, early on Monday, a lot of great names that were splitting hairs on in the ten thousand dollar range uh, is really laying a, a solid foundation here. You know, his he has now been really good ball striking. So in each of his last six measured events, he has gained four or more strokes on approach uh, in five of them. If we start scrolling back, I mean, I can only find. Uh, it, 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 it was it was before the shutdown. That's exactly when it was. It was before the shutdown is when we saw anything like this from Rory, and it was when he was piling up those top five finishes all over the place. Now, he is going to have to figure out the putter. Uh, lost three and a half strokes putting at, uh, at TPC Southwind. That's not unusual. What is kind of good about Rory is that he putts well um, well enough kind of out of nowhere, right? So here are his last handful of, of putting results. Minus three and a half plus 3.6. Minus two plus three. Minus three plus seven. That's that's how you win golf tournaments, ladies and gentlemen. You are volatile with your putter that way. You lay the blueprint of being great on approach. You're still a very good driver of the golf ball. You're only $10,000. That, to me, 
Like I'm, I'm pretty excited to play Rory. The last time he played Liberty National, he finished sixth. So that's that's probably where I will um, likely be spending a lot of my my capital in the in the 10K range. And I know we're spending a lot of time there, but listen. It's a stacked field. There's a lot of guys to talk about. We'll jump down to the 9K range and see if I can find um, find some interesting options here as well. What's up, guys? Just wanted to pop in real quick and see if you're a member of rickrungood.com yet. If you have not been paying attention, there's been a lot of new data injected. There's been a lot of new tools. Things are constantly being updated. You're getting official PGA Tour strokes gain data round by round. There's a ton of Corn Ferry Tour information. There's a ton of Champions Tour information. The custom model has being is constantly being expanded so that you can choose any metrics that you want and create lineups that way it's constantly being updated and there are a few ways to join it's seven dollars a week it's twenty dollars a month it's a hundred for six months or 200 for the year which also gets you access into the slack channel where there is plenty of discussion questions answers all that good stuff going on all the time so don't wait any longer subscribe to rickrungood.com I find this 9K range fascinating. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau stands out to me immediately. He's $9,600. He's cheaper than Justin Thomas. He's won this event. He did not win it at Liberty National. There is a strong possibility that he contends again. You know, he finished eighth at, at FedEx St. Jude. It didn't necessarily go his way on Sunday. That is a kind of something that has happened often recently or more often than he would like where, and, and when things start to go sideways for Bryson, he's, he's not good at putting the wheels back on. And if he's not in it and he's not winning, it's, it's over. So I think he is one of the riskiest plays. But what you're seeing is a golfer who never lose strokes off the tee. What you're seeing is a golfer who uh, has gained strokes on approach in five of his last six, when really that was the thing from... I guess it was November Masters to this summer in May. He was all over the place. You know, some weeks he'd be great on approach. Other weeks he'd be terrible. He has really steadied that ship. Uh, the other good thing, the putting's back, right? This this is when, when Bryson had that unbelievable, was it, I guess it was 2020 where he was, I don't know if he was first or top 10 in both strokes gained off the tee and strokes gained putting. That's an incredibly difficult combination to have. He's back to that, which is really, really encouraging. Now, he is going to be high risk. Uh, to kind of put this a little bit into perspective, because it's very easy to look at these results and be like, oh, he hasn't been good, or to watch him and see that he's you know in his own head or whatever. If you look since the start of April, uh, which includes the Masters, Valero, like this is four months now, four and a half months, how good has Bryson been? Well, he's been okay. You know, he's gaining 1.09 strokes per round. But to put that into perspective, it's better than Justin Thomas. It's better than Brooks Kepka. And I think we would all agree that Kepka, you know, if you asked anybody who's been better since April, Kepka or or Bryson, I think you'd unanimously get Kepka answers. And Kepka's had a lot of high finishes. He won in uh, Phoenix. Was that after? Uh no, I guess that was before this. So, like, you, you, you would get some. I think you'd get a unanimous answer that it's that it's Brooks when the metrics say it's it's Bryson, and it's just the results are kind of different, and the way we perceive them is is very different. So, uh, I'm I'm really circling Bryson DeChambeau in the nine thousand dollar range, and of course Abraham Answer is coming off of his first victory. He's ninety four hundred. I'm not nearly as excited about that. Although, if you if you want to look at what these guys did at Liberty National, uh, he finished runner up. In, in, in 2019 at, at Liberty National. Um, I'm a bit more partial to the Victor Hovlands of the world. I'm a bit more partial to, um, you know, Scotty Scheffler and Patrick Cantlay. These are guys that I think have legitimate uh, winning upside. Hovland, uh, definitely. Um, but here's what I also want to do, though. While, I'm, while I have this loaded in for the last couple of months, just kind of look at these 9K range guys and see who kind of comes up first. And answer, answer's been phenomenal. Answer is light years ahead of anybody else in the $9,000 range in terms of strokes gained total. Of course, he had all those top 10 finishes. Then he finally gets it done. Outside of that, it's pretty close. You know, Cantlay, Scheffler, Hovland have all been in the 1.3s. Daniel Berger and Hideki Matsuyama actually in the 1.4s. Um, Hideki is a really interesting buy low candidate here because he is generally... Not a very popular golfer. Um, I don't know if it's just because the putter and he's really difficult to watch or whatever it is, but H Hideki is generally not a, a very popular golfer. I mean, even at Wyndham, after two really good weeks in a row, he was 16% owned. Coming off of a, a bronze medal uh, playoff, 
in in Tokyo. The next week, he was 4% owned. Uh, even going to Tokyo, uh, playing in his home country, a place that should be a second-shot course, 14% owned. He just never, he just never gets that ownership. He never garners ownership. And it's, it's, it's interesting. So what we have is, I mean, look at the strokes gain approach numbers. It has never been about the approach numbers, right? He's always phenomenal. It's always about this column right here, strokes gain putting. And he has lost strokes uh, on the greens in four in a row. He has lost them in six of seven, right? Yes. The, the, Goodish news is uh, that even losing a stroke over four rounds is probably good enough for Hideki to win. I mean, we saw him get into a playoff that way in Memphis by losing a stroke on the putting surfaces. The next part of the good news is we're back on bent. This is uh, this is Hideki's basically his best surface. This and Poa, the only two surfaces that he actually gains on. It's very very small, 0.05 per round on bent. So he's basically a zero putter, but a zero putter for Hideki Matsuyama is very very interesting. So um, he has my he has my full attention at nine thousand dollars flat. You can really start to build a lot of great squads with a lot of high upside just coming out of a couple of the value plays here. The $8,000 range, uh, I'm probably loading up on the top. You know, uh, Webb Simpson here is, <laughs> he probably should have won last week. You know, there's a case to be made that he probably should have won at Wyndham. He was lights out on approach, which is something we have not seen from him recently, but is much more in line with the longer term version. The fact that he lost strokes around the green is shocking. The fact that he lost strokes on the greens, a little bit shocking. Um, this result actually also looks worse. This is an amazing situation, and we're going to look back on this um, because we're going to look back at it next year too, and we're going to say, oh, wow, Webb has you know five top seven, uh, seven finishes at Wyndham in a row, but his le- last year was his worst one. He T7, one shot out of the playoff, one shot out of the playoff. That usually gets you, you know, if you finish one, one shot behind the guy who wins it in regulation, that's usually a second or a third place finish. But because six golfers got into the playoff, he gets bumped down a three way tie for seventh. It actually makes it, it's going to make his earnings look worse. It's going to make his positioning look worse. Look at the strokes gained because he's going to, if you, if I throw up the strokes gained from, from last week, uh, Webb gained 9.25 to the field, and all those guys who got into the playoff gained 10.25, one shot off. So that actually result that result actually looks looks uh, looks much worse. So Webb is very intriguing. The other uh, the other things are we've got uh, we have Harris English who. I am a glutton for punishment. I'm happy to go back to the guy who melted down on Sunday. I mean, he had multiple wins before that. He was on the clock. It obviously impacted him. I'm willing to go right back to him. Okay, $8,800. He has been so incredibly good. You know, if we just continue to use, let's just do the start of 2021, like this entire year. And I'm just going to sort by strokes gain total and and see where Harris English shows up on this list. Um, wow, actually, he does not show up on it nearly where I thought he was going to show up. I might have to I might have to adjust this statement here. Oh my God, how is he this far? How is he this far down the list? Fifty seven because he had that stretch of golf here. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's do since Byron, I'll make these, I will make these stats uh, go in my favor eventually here. I thought he was going to be like top five. Um, Since Byron Nelson, which would be May 16th. I'll really cherry pick these, but that's still three months. Today's the 16th. That's three months. All right, let's see now. Yeah, there we go. This is what I was expecting to see. Number three, <laughs> Ron Morikawa, Harris English. He's been that good. This doesn't even include one of his victories. Um, I, I, I think there is a, a really a really strong case to be made to go back to him. Same with Paul Casey. Guys that like did not play last week who have been racking up good results, I'm all in on those guys. Um, I thought there was one more. Oh, okay. I think I think Adam Scott is, is interesting, and I talk about this a lot. There is a... There is a perception versus reality issue with a lot of things that happen uh, on the PGA Tour, and 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 people, I think in general understand how volatile it is, but don't don't nearly get how volatile and how lucky you kind of have to be. So coming off a runner-up finish uh, last week, now I had mentioned 
I believe it was in the live chat. Someone asked me about Adam Scott and I was like, I'm, I was so close. I was trying to get to Adam Scott. Uh, I was really impressed that he had fixed the putter and, and he, he had tacked on another week last week where he gained strokes putting, where I've been so impressed with that aspect of his game. And I said, you know, he just missed out on my player pool because I couldn't get there on the ball striking numbers. That was still a concern for me. Well, Goes out and gains a stroke off the tee. Gains 6.8 on approach. Did he find something? Is this going to continue? The answer is hopefully because now he's a really good price. And I think we would be looking a lot differently at Adam Scott if he makes that 4-foot, 11-inch putt on the first hole of the playoff. And now he's a winner, right? And now we say, oh, of course we knew that win was coming. Look, he had fixed the putter, all that good stuff. Uh, also, he continues to have things to play for. Not that these guys don't have anything to play for, but he continues to have things to play for because now he's got to get himself into the top 70 so that he can make sure that he advances into the playoffs. I have concerns that he uh, does not per, uh, putt well on bent grass. However, I look and I see he's finished fifth at this event twice in the last three years, one of them being at Liberty National. I think he's in a really good buy opportunity. The seven thousand dollar range for me, um, it leaves it leaves a lot to be desired. I'm I'm not particularly interested in investing in any one golfer here heavily. I will probably likely spread out exposures uh, to these golfers across the board. They're all to me, it's all splitting hairs, and none of them are particularly great. The one that I do want to point out, especially for DFS purposes, that I think is is going to be someone that we need to keep an eye on for the rest of the week is Cameron Tringale. We have not seen him since the 3M Open. He didn't play the Olympics, took the week off at the Barracuda, didn't qualify for the WGC, and I guess took the week off for the Wyndham because he was comfortable with his with his positioning to try to make a run deep into the playoffs here. So we haven't seen him, but three consecutive top 25 finishes. And if we go back to the Holy Grail and I just keep it at you know the start of 2021, that's a long time. It's eight months. Kind of gives you a really good idea about how well guys are playing. And I just sort by strokes gain total and look for golfers in the $7,000 range. That's, that's what I'm doing. Number one is Charlie Hoffman. And a lot of those gains were uh, you know, here in, in the spring and into the start of the summer. And he hasn't been nearly as good recently. Loses strokes at the Open Championship, or misses the cut at the Open Championship. Loses strokes in two of his last three measured events. Hasn't been nearly as good. Brandon Grace is number two in the $7,000 range. Now, he has been uh, buoyed by a couple of really strong performances. The runner-up finish at the Wyndham where he gained over 10. That is now the third time in his last five, uh, actually three consecutive measured events in a row. He's gained over 10 strokes total. Now he also had a missed cut at the Open Championship there and a 30th place finish at the Barracuda. So he's playing well. Um, and, then, and then you get to Tringale. And I wonder if people... Just kind of forget about this. You know, when he was at his best, he was gaining strokes across the board. He lost the driver between the Wells Fargo Championship and the Rocket Mortgage, um, made the cut at the Open Championship. I wish we had the advanced metrics there, finished 26, but then found the driver again in in uh, Twin Cities, TPC Twin Cities at the 3M Open. And, and this stat line is much more reminiscent of the good version of Cameron Tringali where he, where he uh, really thrives across the board. So... Grace, Tringale, I think they are my favorites in this range. I'm not particularly excited about uh, about either of them. There is a, a case to be made to go back to someone like a Cam Davis who, you know, since the victory cooled off just a little bit as you would expect, hasn't played Liberty National in competition before, but you're kind of banking on some of that raw talent. And then the one golfer that um, was very popular last week and I imagine is going to continue to be popular is Seamus Power. You know, he finished 60th at the Wyndham. It's probably not the result that you or I were looking for, but at least he made the cut. Uh, I think he was 8,500 last week. He's now getting a significant uh, price decrease still coming in off all these really good finishes, top 10s, top 20s, the victory at the Barbasol. So I'm certainly not ready to cut bait from Seamus Power yet because of 160th place finish at the Wyndham Championship. So that's that's probably the 7K range for me. I'm not overly excited about, about any of those, um, honestly, quite, quite at all. The $6,000 range, and in a similar vein of uh, Cameron Tringale, who we just haven't seen for a while, uh, Mav McNeely, we haven't seen much, right? And when we've seen him, he's played great. He's been piling up top 20 finishes. He's now got four in a row of those, five top 30s in a row. I think he's just fine. How about Brendan Todd getting it done for us last week, right? You know, the course fit who we just had to say, oh, man, just 
Just trust that he hasn't been that bad. Finished 10th. That was great. I'm not sure this is this is the week. Um, we have to continue to take Roger Sloan seriously because now what could be trending is a golfer who has five top 30s in his last six starts, and they're getting progressively better. Barbasol, 31st. 3M, 16th. Barracuda, 6th. Wyndham, runner-up. Now, with the way that these results are kind of coming in, there's a lot of guys that, like, like that's not the finish line for Roger Sloan. When guys get in contention like this, they can feel it. They know they're playing well. They they see the finish line. They've gotten close, and they're a little bit hungrier. That's the way that a lot of this works, and obviously it's it's very it's very narrative-based. The other good thing that Roger Sloan has going for him, very well-rounded player. Usually does not um, need to rely on one aspect, nor does he have... Um, one fatal flaw in his game. That's that's some exciting stuff. I think we need to continue to take him very, very seriously. He's only $6,800. Now, what's really interesting about this is because this is the strongest field ever and because all of these guys have qualified for the playoffs, there are really good options down here. I think it. I think this has to be a Stars and Scrubs week, not only because you have... Um, it, it is a cut event that is not a big cut. 124 down to 70, I believe. No. I guess, wait, are they going to cut it to 70 or are they going to go to 65 in ties? Now I got to look. I don't know why this always confuses me. I'm, I'm not sure why my brain thinks it's top seven. I know that's what they're going to cut the playoffs down to, but I don't know why I thought they also did that for this event. But either way, it is a smaller or a larger percentage of people who are going to make the cut. And with the, the field strength, it, it, there are there's good players here. These are good PGA Tour players down in you know the low sixes. Adam Shank has been on a roll. Scott Piercy has been on a roll. We get access to you know guys that are usually more expensive than this. You know Henrik Norlander, who withdrew last Wednesday or Tuesday. He's back in the field this week. Um, Hank Lebiota back in the field this week, coming off of a missed cut. We'll see how people treat him. These are really interesting names. I mean, Chesson Hadley finished 15th last week. Uh, he, All of these guys have something to play for, too. This is an incredibly interesting range. There's not a ton of, of golfers that I would be super uh, excited about, except maybe, let me check one thing on Denny McCarthy real quick. Um, I wanted to see how he did that last week because he finished 15th. Yeah, this is always the hope for Denny. And I don't know how realistic this continues to be. He gained two strokes on approach. Two strokes on approach, approach for Denny McCarthy because he is such a good putter is like stealing. And because that's how he's, he's, he was, he's bad every time he doesn't. So that's a nice little flyer uh, to try to be early on someone like a Denny McCarthy and the putter just absolutely continues to roll on week in and week out. But I think we need to strongly consider this range here because of uh, kind of the situation that we have this week. So it's, it's, it's really compelling stuff. Let's go make a model. Custom model on rickrungood.com. Let's go. I want to be a little bit more volatile this week. Actually, I want to be like kind of a lot more volatile this week. This is a sprint now. This is... Um, you know, your last gasp for glory. Let's go less 16 rounds. I've probably not done anything that low in a while, but I, I really want to be volatile this week. So what do we know about Liberty national? Um, I think driving distance is going to be important. Let's call it 20 and call bird. you better 20. Let's call, uh, a, so that's, that's 40. Let's call approach. So I want to make again, this modified strokes gain total. And I don't want to weigh strokes gain off the tee too much because I've already done Actually, I'm going to do strokes gained off the tee. I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm going to do a modified kind of strokes gained off the tee. I'm going to do 20 on distance, 10 on accuracy, right? So that gives me 50 left to mess around with. That gives me 25 to put on approach, which is uh, every single week the most important, and that leaves me with 75. So let's do 15 around the green and 10 on putting. So I've, I've, I've kind of double modified this strokes gained total number, and I've said give me, give me that, but for recent – form and my best golfer is oh boy yeah we knew this was coming right brandon grace again i'm being really really volatile here so this is you're going to see some names that are really good values grace is 7200 rom is number two which again is just a testament to he's just been the best player he's just been the best player on tour harris english is three love it so uh, sloan is four no problem johnny vegas didn't talk about him he's been really good vegas mcneely 
List, Lebiota, Scheffler, and Power round out my top ten. A couple of notables. While I love do why I love doing you know last sixteen rounds is you know we haven't seen a lot of McNeely recently. So if you just do the last couple of events, maybe they didn't play it. Or if you just use dates, maybe they haven't played. But last sixteen rounds or last X rounds really levels the playing field a little bit. And look at all this value. These are golfers that are going to be uh, targets for me. Uh, to kind of pull this stars and scrubs, the Sloans, the McNeelys, the Lists, the Lebiotas, and then kind of round them out with maybe some Rory's or some Roms and some Schefflers and stuff like that. Um, where do some of these other 10K, 10K guys fall? Morikawa, 26th. Rory, 30th. Spieth, 10,800. Or that's his salary. Uh, 36th. Not very accurate, I suppose. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so this is something that will evolve as the week goes on. So obviously we can run another one uh, during the live chat on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern time on the Rick Run Good YouTube channel. This is the sprint. The sprint to the FedEx Cup. And then we're going to start over like the very next week. I don't even know if there's an off week, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go. Tweet me at Rick Run Good. Leave a comment below and I'll talk to you guys soon.